The first sign of spring for any serious cook is when you start to see ramps popping up. You're probably gonna start to see them all over the place over the next month or two on social media, on restaurant menus. So I always assume that there are a bunch of people who just don't know what a ramp is or why people go crazy for them. So today we're gonna cover a few things about ramps, mainly what they are, what they taste like, what makes them unique and expensive, and then we're gonna make a ramp puree for a ramp spaghetti alle vongole that we're gonna make in the next episode. So this is kind of like a two-parter. That sounds good to you, let's just jump right into it. Ramps, they're often referred to as a wild leek. They're part of the allium family, which is made up of garlic, onion, leek, chives, shallots, scallions. Ramps sort of have an amalgamation of all of those characteristics into one thing that has sort of like a unique form factor. And if you're watching from another country and you don't know what they are, it's probably because they're mainly found in North America. So sadly, most of the world doesn't even know what they are or get to enjoy them. So if you find them, feel fortunate. Now let's take a look at the anatomy of a ramp and the flavor profile. Up top you have a leafy green part. Imagine something like a spinach that has nice hints of garlic and onion built into it. Then as you go down, you have the leaf that connects to the stem and the stem connects to the bulb and those can be treated very similarly. That's where the strongest ramp flavor lives. So you can use it like you would use like the whites of a scallion or onions or garlic. They can be cooked whole or grilled whole, just some olive oil, some salt, char them up, saute them, and they're really delicious on their own as a side or as a topping on steak or whatever. They can be broken down. You can separate the leaves, which is what we're going to do today to make the ramp puree. You could cut off the bottoms, you could pickle them, you could dice them up, treat them just like onions or garlic, like we were saying before. The leaves can also be treated like a leafy green, like a spinach or like an herb to make like a pesto. You can infuse it into butter or you can pickle them. Really whatever you want, you can kind of go crazy with them. And that's the fun of this season is to see what people do with it. It goes great with basically anything onions or garlic might go in. It sort of has the same kind of effect that a tomato season has where you can get excited that you wait all year for the couple months where you get to enjoy this delicious thing. It also sort of leads into what makes these guys unique. And that's mainly the fact that they are foraged and wild, they're not cultivated. What it means is that it's basically harvested the same way like you would harvest truffles. There's no big farms or factories pumping these out. They come once a year, they basically emerge right when the ground's starting to defrost. There is a mindset to sustainability here. If you go and find some in the wild and you pick all of them, they may not propagate again. And anything that's foraged or wild is going to be more expensive because it's harder to find, obviously. The supply is limited. My buddy Adam, who has a YouTube channel, I believe last year went foraged for them over in Chicago. He has a great video of him foraging those and cleaning them and dealing with them. Now, the one thing we have to do is clean them. As you can see, they're pretty filthy, but they, it just kind of wipes off, as you can see. So we need to go rinse these underwater clean these up, kind of remove any kind of sliminess down by the bulb, and then give them a nice rinse. First, I'm just gonna kind of take my nail, just sort of get to that nice clean layer, just inspect each one. Definitely takes a minute, so if you have a lot of them, hope you're patient. Just to go backwards really quick, when you buy them and you're not gonna use them right away, just wrap them in a damp paper towel and store them in a Ziploc that's not fully sealed, and they should stay good for a few days and not wilt. Just like you store most greens. Once you've peeled off that slimy layer, just cut off the root end and then get that into some water, let that soak and wash off any dirt left over from the soil. Just for reference, this is about 50 ramps. When you see ramps in the store, you just buy as many as you can and worry about what you're gonna do with it later because you don't know if you're gonna see them again in the store for a while. Once they got a nice soak, we're just gonna toss them through a salad spinner and dry off some of that excess water. And then we're gonna take about 80% of the ramps and separate the stems from the leaves, keeping 20% of the ramps whole. The leaves will go into the ramp puree and then the stems and the whole ramps we're gonna use to make our ramp vongole in the next episode. So for our 
spaghetti with clam recipe. I'm gonna save the whole ramps. We're gonna saute those, get some nice color on them. Maybe I might broil them under the broiler and char them. And then we're gonna save these. These are gonna be cooked with a little bit of chili flake, maybe some Calabrian chilies and some garlic. I'm also gonna save maybe just a handful of leaves that I'm gonna chop up and we're gonna use them to make a ramp of breadcrumb. So everything here is gonna get saved for the next episode. And what we got here is gonna get pureed into our ramp puree. Get a pot of boiling water on the stove, some salt into it. You're also gonna to wanna to fill up a water bath. So basically we're gonna blanch the ramps, 30 seconds, a minute, not very long, fish them out of the water, drop them into the ice bath, it's gonna lock in a nice green color. Save that water, that's what we're gonna cook the pasta in. Sort of like a ramp broth, or slightly infused that we can obviously use to cook pasta in. I got my new blender here. And I'm just gonna squeeze. It smells so good already. I'm just gonna go in with like, uh, I don't know, quarter cup. If you wanna control the thickness, just add a little bit of olive oil at a time. Obviously, the less you add, the thicker it's gonna be, and the more you add, the thinner it's gonna be. So I'm looking for something slightly looser than a pesto. Need salt. Now it's a good sort of base level flavor. You could add some acidity to it. That would be nice. So what I'm gonna do is add, instead of just like a, an acid, I'm gonna add a little bit of heat because I'm gonna need some heat in the pasta anyway. I'm gonna remove the seeds with my finger. Pop it in there. And then a little bit of that juice that it's packed in. Now you have a nice puree, what you could do, you could now take this another step and strain it through a really fine mesh and you would just get a pure ramp oil, a green oil that you could then do whatever with. Vinaigrettes, salads, you could do that with this too, but so now we're gonna use this stuff next episode. We're gonna make spaghetti alla vongole with ramps. So that's all I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself.